Okay, Region students, welcome to our first video for the new topic, Wave Mechanics. And uh, as I've said uh, before in the magnetism videos, unfortunately, being at home, I don't have uh, a lot of equipment or any of the equipment to show you the demonstrations of the phenomena that we're studying. But hopefully you've watched the two videos uh, that I asked you to watch before this video, the two short videos. One video showing a mass oscillating on a spring and the other video showing a pendulum swinging back and forth. Those are the things that we're going to be studying today and what we're going to be doing today is just learning about the basic concepts of objects that oscillate in the manner seen in the videos. The fancy word for that kind of oscillation is called simple harmonic motion. So let us begin with uh, just today's topic which will be on the concepts of simple harmonic motion. So we have a mass in this diagram oscillating or vibrating on the end of a spring this is the location of a and also just a reminder a spring is something that creates a force f equals kx k being the spring constant of the spring a measure of how tight the spring is so a uh, spring like out of the suspension of your car will have a very large spring constant in the thousands Whereas a spring that's taken out of a click pen or a click mechanical pencil will have a very small spring constant, maybe uh, like 10 newtons per meter or something like that. Uh, and then X is how far the spring is stretched in meters. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the spring force formula. So we have a spring here that can be stretched or crushed or uh, stretched out or compressed. So we have a mass on the end of that spring. This is its location, the relaxed position. I could, and, and here I just have a rubber band at home. So again, no springs at home here. But uh, this would be a spring. We could stretch that spring out and then we can compress that spring in. And that's what this diagram is showing. If we stretch the spring a certain distance plus A and let it go, it will rock it back to the equilibrium, past the equilibrium because it has now velocity and therefore inertia. Objects in motion stay in motion unless acted upon. So it's going to take some force and deceleration to stop the, the, the mass by the spring. And then it'll basically overshoot the equilibrium an equal distance of A, but in the left direction. So we could say here X is minus A. And then, of course, now the spring is compressed again so or, or compressed this time so it'll push this forward and then make it now extend beyond that equilibrium so it'll oscillate back and forth so this is a just a diagram of the motion going back and forth uh, distance a forward and then back to equilibrium a distance a backwards so that is our first definition for the day the term amplitude so uh, amplitude here, uh, its symbol is A and it's measured in meters and the di it's defined as the distance an oscillator travels from equilibrium to maximum displacement. Another definition, cycle. Cycle is one comp complete vibration, motion, uh, and that's the motion of an object from X equals plus A left and then back to x equals plus a. That's what we call a cycle or an oscillation, if you'd like. Uh, and again, you can um, pause this video to take these notes or look at the PDF that I've attached of these notes uh, to, the, to, to this assignment. Another definition, period. Uh, we use a capital T, uh, and it's measured in seconds. The time it takes for one for the object to make one complete vibration. In physics, uh, we use the symbol lowercase t for time, uh, like in, in our kinematics equation, d equals vit plus one half at squared, for instance. But for things that oscillate, that go uh, and repeat themselves over and over again, we use the special symbol t, capital T, to indicate something that is um, happening over and over again. 
Uh, like, for example, another example would be the time it takes a planet to orbit uh, uh, the sun, we would use the symbol capital T as well. So there's another definition, period. Another definition today is what we call frequency, and frequency is given the symbol F. I always write it like a little curly uh, uh, font, but you could just write it as a regular F if you'd like. But frequency is, uh, as I said, measured in hertz, abbreviated HZ, and the definition of frequency is the number of vibrations an object makes in exactly one second. So uh, an example of a frequency could be 10 hertz, and that means in one second, in that amount of time, the object has vibrated through 10 vibrations back and forth. So that's a high frequency. Uh, you could also have a frequency less than one, like 0.2, and that means the object's really oscillating slowly so that in one second it only gets through 20% of its oscillation. So frequencies can be less than one, greater than one. Obviously, the bigger the number, the faster it's vibrating because you have more vibrations in one second. Now, there's a basic relationship between period and frequency, and here it is, T, the period, is 1 divided by frequency, or if you just do a little algebra, you could say frequency is 1 over T, 1 over period. So they're the reciprocals of each other. This is uh, kind of, I guess I could say, common sense, because if you think about it, let's suppose something has a period of 0.5 seconds. That means it takes to go there and back in an oscillation. If you were to time it as it's oscillating, start the stopwatch, stop the stopwatch. In other words, start it and start it, stop it at the same extreme position. That's the period. And let's suppose it takes 0.5 seconds to do that, to go back and forth. Then, if you think about it, 0.5 and then another 0.5 makes one whole second, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And you see my finger went twice back and forth in that one second. In other words, uh, the frequency is 1 over 0.5 gives you um, uh, uh, 2. Uh, another example, let's suppose my period is 0.1 seconds, there and back in 0.1 seconds. What's the frequency? How many vibrations does it make in one second? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, right? Up to one second, you would count up 10 vibrations, each being 0.1. In other words, 1 over 0.1 is 10 hertz, okay? This formula uh, need not be memorized because it is in our Regents reference table. We are now on page 5 of the reference table. Here is a copy of our Regents reference table. You see we are in the wave section on page 5. And right here is that formula period is 1 over the frequency. Okay? Alright, a couple more definitions for today. Okay or actually it's a couple formulas. So these are formulas for the period of oscillators. One, the first one, is for the period of a mass on a spring. T equals 2 pi, 3.14, square root of mass over spring constant. And this is, uh, kind of makes sense from the standpoint, if I have an uh, object oscillating on a spring like this, and then I add more mass on that spring, I have more inertia. And so when I pull this out and let it go, rather than ricocheting back very rapidly, it would lag behind and take a long time to accelerate it back to equilibrium. And once it gets going, it would have more inertia and take a long time to decelerate it. Long time to accelerate it and long time to decelerate it. So the more mass, more inertia, the longer the period. But it's not as simple as doubling the mass gives you double the period because of the square root. So if you quadruple the mass, 
and you put a factor four of four under the radical, then you are radical quadruple. Square root of four, you are doubling the period. If you make the mass nine times as great, you are tripling the period. If you simply just double the mass, you are making the period radical two times as big, or 1.4 times longer than the original. Spring constant K is in the bottom. And that makes sense also. If I take this and I let it go on a very loose spring, in other words, a small K, small K, it'll very lightly pull it back and very lightly decelerate it. So it'll take um, longer, bigger time if we have a smaller spring constant. Whereas if I put uh, uh, this mass on a very strong spring, a very tight spring, I pull it and it takes so much force to pull it out. I let it go because of the high spring constant. It creates a lot of force. It accelerates it very rapidly and makes the period small. Okay, so that is uh, the form. But interestingly, notice amplitude is not in the formula. In the classroom, I would have a car on a spring and I would show you that if I go like this and I oscillate and it goes like this, start, stop, small amplitude, and then I do a large amplitude, I would go start, stop. And you would see with a stopwatch, even though I made the amplitude larger, the time would come out to exactly the same as a small amplitude. Counterintuitive. You would think the bigger oscillation should have a longer period because it has more distance to travel, and it does not turn out to be the case in simple harmonic motion. All right, hopefully you watched the video of um, the YouTube video before this lesson of a pendulum. And the pendulum is, might not show up that great here, but it's just basically a mass on a, on, on, on a string that you let swing back and forth. Okay, so you could see that in the, in the video, hopefully uh, decent focus. But, uh, so you can uh, time the period of an oscillation Right? Start, stop, start, stop. That would be with a stopwatch timing one oscillation. Right? So that you could also calculate with a formula, looks very similar to this formula with the two and the pi in the front and a square root and a, and a fraction. But what's inside is the length of the string that you put the pendulum on. Okay, so this length, for example, in meters, and g being 9.8. Okay, so you have the notes here. Uh, uh, note that the mass of the pendulum is not in the calculation. In other words, if I make this string, say, 10 meters long, stretch it off a tall building, and I hang this little washer and I let it swing back and forth, and then I get a stronger string, maybe like a, a, a metal wire, and a person hangs on it like on a swing set. Same length string, and the washer and the person, I mean the bolt and the person, would oscillate at the same period. It would take them the same amount of time to go back and forth. Again, counterintuitive. Here, mass is in the equation. You think, oh, more mass, it should take it longer to oscillate. But the reason why that isn't the case is because, like with gravity, you have very often more force pulling this back to equilibrium but also more inertia and in Newton's second law with force on the top A is F over M you would have uh, uh, the same ratio come out for the acceleration. Alright, just a couple more definitions uh, about oh, these by the way are not on the reference table and that's because they are not uh, directly in the curriculum uh, if they show up on the regents, they would give you the formula on the regents. So you don't have to memorize them, but some of the homework problems, you may have to use those formulas to answer. All right, a couple last definitions. Okay, the natural frequency of something is uh, the frequency of vibration when you give the object a single burst of energy. So in the classroom uh, at school, I had uh, I would have a couple crystal wine glasses 
and I would flick the wine glass and you would all hear it ring and make a musical note, okay? So when I flick that and let it ring, it's ringing at its natural vibration, or natural frequency. I give it a single burst of energy and then let it ring at its frequency. Resonance is something very interesting. It's the condition that arises when an object is rhythmically stimulated at its natural frequency. And what happens in that case is the amplitude grows large and the structure may fail. Resonance in engineering is a bad thing. If you get a building or a bridge forced to vibrate by something repeatedly with a small vibration that's added again and again, the amplitude of the object starts to grow. So if you give a little nudge to this and keep nudging it, it keeps gaining amplitude and then maybe we could even get the spring to break or the bridge to collapse or in the case of a wine glass, if you flick the wine glass and you hear the note that it sing, rings at and then you get someone who can sing, an opera singer, and sing that note perfectly then, and they can sustain that note over time, it's in theory possible to shatter the wine glass. The last two videos after this video that I've included in this assignment, you don't have to watch them. They're kind of fun to watch. They're short, relatively short. The first video shows uh, a wine glass getting shattered by sound done in a physics lab, and it's only a minute long. It's uh, interesting to watch if you're, again, not necessary, but you could go ahead and watch it. The second video is a very dramatic video of a bridge collapsing in California being stimulated by the wind blowing at a right uh, rhythm and creating a, a resonance, growing and growing oscillations until the bridge collapses. And that was filmed in 1940 when the bridge actually collapsed. And uh, it's also, like I said, uh, fun to watch because you have a, an announcer announcing it as if it's a sporting event. It's kind of uh, funny and cute. But that's uh, the first lesson uh, uh, for uh, our WAVES unit on just simple harmonic motion. Okay, again, we learned about uh, masses on a spring, a bunch of definitions, amplitude, cycle, period, frequency, and then we learned a basic formula that relates period and frequency. We learned some formulas for period of a uh, mass on a spring, period of a pendulum, and then this interesting idea of resonance. So uh, resonance actually uh, asked about on the regions sort of often, so it's something you definitely want to be familiar and comfortable with. Okay, uh, thank you for joining me, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video.